Oh, this is much fun. I'm, before I get started, just say I'm just getting adjusted to new form of technology in terms of how to do my Facebook Lives. So if you haven't seen and watch my Facebook Lives for the last seven, eight days, you're probably got no idea what's going on. In which case, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> all right, let's just jump in. So welcome to episode number 966, 966, getting up there. Um, the topic today is about when you're going to let yourself off the hook. And I'm using this particularly around the framing of relationship. However, you can probably apply most of what I'm going to talk about to any area of your life where you may be finding yourself um, on the hook, <laughs> put it simply. Um, and the reason why I spoke the subtitle about, you know, when you're in love fully again, because it really is a relationship centric. And I've watched this happen so many times that I've done it myself, which is why I see it so often out there because it's resonant. And I figured if I share it here, maybe you'll find yourself in a place where this resonates for you too. Fair enough. Okay, let's jump in. So I'm gonna drop I'm gonna drop the F bomb right now. I'm gonna talk about forgiveness. <laughs> in case you're wondering where it's gonna go at some point, but I don't know where it's gonna show up yet because these are never scripted. But I want to speak to the point is that we have a habit of devaluing ourselves. Actually, let me back that up a second. Because I mean it came to mind as people who don't do that. Let me say it this way. People tend to come into let me say three groups for the sake of argument. Let's say three groups. One group, one group of the people who basically are um, equal to and comparative to what really is going on for them and who they are, period, simple. That's the minority, to be honest. But I'm going to help you get there. That's what part of this talks about. The same group of people who basically their ego is so overinflated that it's nothing to do with how they really feel about themselves. They actually project a falsehood about themselves that's not real. Oftentimes, that actually is fake. There's a form of protection, but I won't get into that one unless I need to right now. But the third option, which is where I think most of us fall, is people who follow my broadcast, and I personally have fallen into, is we tend to put ourselves in a group where we don't actually recognize who we are to the level of who we really are, meaning that, I know what I'm trying to say, but I'm just going to say it. The way we present ourselves to the world, oftentimes inside, we think is not as great as we really are. Yes. We're greater than we think we are. You are. Yes, you are. Because I know I am. Okay, done. I'll give a sign off now. No. Let me dive into it a bit more. Because the thing about this is there's a part of us that's either is trained in a way that is either to be humbled, as in we've been humbled by experiences in our life, or we've had mistakes we've made in the, we've made mistakes in the past, or we've made Errors in judgment. I'm going to I'm going to be careful how I frame that because I don't want to say we made mistakes that are bad. We've done things and let me say, yeah, say another way. We've done things in the past that we regret. That's probably more accurate. And what we've done with that regret is pile it on ourselves as if it's something wrong with us. Now you may not want to admit this, but I'm guessing it's true for you because if you're human and you're caring, those two key qualities, it's probably true for you as well as it is for me. So the understanding is that we carry this weight upon ourselves this burden of suppression. Um, if you've ever seen the movie The Mission with Robert De Niro and Jeremy Irons, classic movie um, from, God, mid-80s, I think? It's been a while now. Anyway, it's a movie called The Mission. And in it, there's a scene which is, basically, it's about forgiveness, it's about freedom, it's about letting yourself off the hook, big time. Because when I was talking about carrying the burdens, that scene came to mind. If you get a chance to watch that clip, if I can find the clip online, I'll post it in the link in the comments below. Because when you watch that scene, and it's a fairly long scene, but it's potent in what it is, you understand just what it's like to let go of that burden. Because what we do with that regret, let me back up with something earlier, that sense of regret was something we didn't want to do or we made a mistake with or we didn't feel we were appropriate, we tend to, to inflict ourselves with that burden, that weight after the fact. So when it comes to relationships, for example, we may have a bad experience in a relationship, bad in the sense that we didn't like what we did, or we didn't like how we participated, we made a bad choice, we went with somebody we shouldn't have gone with, uh, we didn't treat them right, we didn't treat ourselves right, we didn't have them treat us right, all those different reasons why it didn't work. And then we pile it onto ourselves like we're carrying extra weight around. That's why I get the sense of the thing from the mission. So again, if you haven't seen the movie, I recommend watching it, and I'll try and find that clip if I can on YouTube, which is probably somewhere out there, of that scene in the mission where he... Um, carries his burdens because that's the feeling I'm getting that we carry that weight on because we somehow feel we need to punish ourselves now this is not usually conscious by the way this is usually subconscious we don't just come out of a relationship going 
hmm, I screwed up, therefore I need to put this weight on top of myself. We don't do that, but we do it subconsciously because we're wired that way. Those of us who are aware of our goodness, and most of us are becoming aware of our goodness, oftentimes are aware that we carry, or, or maybe not even, give me, let me, say another, let me say another way, we oftentimes carry this weight on top of it, this shell, which is the protection of the goodness, which actually is done from the wrong angle. angle. It's not, we're not protecting ourselves. What we're doing is punishing ourselves because we have this ruling inside that we're not deserving what we really want because we did something wrong, whatever that was. And that self-inflicted pain, this is a self-inflicted judgment, because it's a judgment, is holding us back from what we can have. So this invitation, we're talking in this talk right now, is are you willing right now to let yourself off the hook and start loving again and start having what you want again, to be free again, to have what you want again? Does that make sense? So to break this down in another way, There's a, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Excuse me, I had to consult with the higher spirit. <laughs> so this is a few things that we do to ourselves in our lives. And these are things that you may be aware of. They may be familiar terms. Um, judgment, as I already mentioned. Um, resentment. Guilt. Um, what else is there? Those three are the big ones. I don't think there's any more, because basically those three alone, would, if you understand how they are impacting you negatively and you resolve them, I can guarantee you will change your life dramatically. So stay tuned about that, because I'll talk about that in a moment. So again, these three things. So understanding that what we're doing is self-inflicted, by the way, nothing to do with anybody else. These are relationship choices. We've, we may have had relationships in the past, and the choice that we make because of those, we choose to inflict a pain upon ourselves. So for example, guilt and resentment in particular, the two of my, I won't say favorite, but the most ones I've learned a lot about, is that we use them as the ability to put a wedge between who we really are as amazing, perfect beings and what we think we did wrong. Let me say it another way. Guilt, for example. The way I remember learning from a workshop that took many, many years ago, so I'm quoting from them in a way, is that we have this thing where we believe we're good people. Because if you don't believe you're a good person, you won't care about any of this stuff. So if you do care about this, you're a good person. Take it from me. But then we do something that is um, in violation of that in our relationships, or we say something, do something, maybe we crashed the car or we um, yelled at our, our ex-partner, which is something that for some people is no big deal, but for some people it's very much a weighty, weighty um, judgment. And so what we do is we have these conflicting things. We have the, we have, we're a good person, we did something bad. They don't fit together. So what we do is we create this wall in between called guilt. So it's something I learned, in this, this, I'm talking about this as a metaphor, because it's a training I learned years ago, and it's works, so, so follow me through on this one. So we do this with ourselves. Resentment is the same thing, just turned outward. So we have a judgment. We, we build, I mean, if you're a conscious person, you're a caring person, you know everybody's all wonderful, loving beings, good people inside. But externally, they might present differently. And so we end up having things happen where people who we think are wonderful people do less than wonderful things. Maybe they cut us up in traffic. Been there, done that in LA. Or they were a bad in relationship with us. Maybe it's a sibling or a family member who was perpetually hurting you. We tend to find ourselves building up this wall of resentment because it just separates us. It separates the behavior they're doing from what we know to be true about them, although this is all subconscious, by the way. Let me, let me frame that. If you're not going in our minds going, I'm going to be pissed off at them, so I'm going to put this wall in between to make myself feel okay. Not quite. Again, subconscious intent entirely. This thing with guilt and resentment are both anchored in the fact that we have a distorted view of the world. And, and a, I'm saying antagonistic isn't the right word, but we have a, a, a judgmental way of being in the world. And judgment is one of these things that is, is insidious and pivotal. When we judge, we are basically creating separation from ourselves and loving. You can't be loving and judgmental at the same time. Can't be done. If you can prove that you can do it, I'd love to see how you do it. Because when we're judging, we're not in our hearts. When we're judging, we're not in our loving. Loving overrides judgment. So that's one of the keys, by the way, which is why I talk about forgiveness, the big F word I mentioned earlier. When you learn to forgive yourself about things you've said, done, not done, not said, believed, judged against other people, made other people wrong about, whatever that was, when you were willing to forgive that, which basically means, as the one way saying it, is applying loving to the parts inside that hurt. When you're willing 
to face that wrongness that you did or was done to you and you let yourself off the hook, hence the title, then you're actually going to be able to access freedom. But the thing what we do in our lives, and I am realizing I'm pulling some from pieces I've understood from other people, um, it was Barbara Angelis, she was speaking at Agape five, six years ago now, and in a talk, because Barbara Angelis, Barbara DeAngelis started a, comp, a, a business called Making Love Work back in the 90s, 80s. And she talks about love and relationships. And she talks about how when you are wounded in past relationships, you carry that resentment, the judgments, the grief, the wounding, the pain, whatever that is, and you don't heal it, it's like you're putting more layers of protection around your heart. The way she used the analogy was, is imagine that our loving, our ability to love, is like a, a, a lake. Yeah, lake safe, a big lake. But the thing is, when we have this wounding, this pain, this suffering inside, it's like we're creating ice on top of that lake. And we're building out layer, layer, layers and layers and layers of ice on top of the lake, so it becomes impervious. When it comes to loving somebody else, our love is blocked by the ice we put on top. That's the judgment, the resentment, the guilt we're carrying inside. The way through that, the way to thaw that, so to speak, is forgiveness. Because forgiveness is allowing the loving to transcend and come through those parts inside that are hurt. It sounds simplistic, but I'm, I'm giving you this, this ideally concise and simple example because it is transformational. When you understand just how amazing you really are and how loving you really are, all that stuff we carry around, those burdens you carry on your shoulders, like I mentioned, become feathers. They just float away. Because you start to realize that what happened, happened, and you are better than that. Not that you're better than them, but you're better than you judge yourself to be before. It really is time you let yourself off the hook. It really is time that you really claimed your fullness. It really is time that you let yourself have the love and express the love that you really are. Forgiveness is one of those powerful keys that we overlook too easily because we think, oh, forgiveness is no big deal, or it's the Catholic thing that you've got to judge and have guilt and forgiveness. Actually, Jewish thing as well. I'm Jewish, so I've, it's both of those. But the truth is, Forgiveness is an everyday applicable tool you can use in your life to transform your experience from suffering to freedom. You get to choose that though. In my coaching with my clients, I help them with that. So I'm, I'm going to put some links in the comments you can check out later on if you want. But I want you to make sure you get the fact you can get forgiveness. I actually have some worksheets. So if you want to check out a couple of things, one of the things you can go online right now and go to Colin, Colin Tipping, by the way, is an author I know of who wrote a book called Radical Forgiveness. On his website, he has a radical forgiveness worksheet you can get download for free if you want to get it. So I recommend getting that. I have a set of worksheets that I created from my own background, which you can have as well. Just message me and I'll put a comment, link in the comments and reach out to me for that. But above all else, it comes back to love. And yes, I said in the title something about um, are you ready to love again? One of the things about forgiveness and one of the things about not judging yourself anymore is you get to be more loving to yourself. And sometimes you have to do it backwards. Sometimes you can start loving yourself first to start knocking down the walls you've been carrying inside, that ice on the ocean or the ice on the lake I mentioned earlier, so you can be loving more freely. You gotta, it's like you've got to love yourself more to get love. You've got to love yourself more to be love. And you've got to love yourself more to express love. That's a triple threat. <laughs> so that I'll put myself love meditation in the practice in, practice in, the, med, in the comments because that will help you as well. But loving yourself by doing things like um, being kind to yourself, being caring to yourself, being gentle with yourself are part of the way through. Forgiveness is another one. So those two be in the comments. I'll put some other links in there to keep you busy. And really, this is a chance, opportunity, time right now to stop doing what you've been doing to yourself that hasn't worked. Be willing to forgive yourself. Be willing to let yourself off the hook. Be willing to care about yourself so that you're no longer carrying those burdens on your shoulders that are weighing you down and making you feel less than who you really are. You deserve to have amazing relationships in all areas of life. So if you're not doing that, perhaps you're holding yourself back by not loving yourself. Self-love is the way, and forgiveness is one of the tools to get there. Whew, I think that was a good enough talk. <laughs> Again, I'll, if I can find the video for the, from the mission, I'll put the link in the comments, because once you watch the visual, and the vid, it is a visual reference point, when you watch that visual and see what forgiveness is about, the allowance of that, and De Niro, of course, is an amazing actor, so it's a great piece. That scene, for me, was a game changer. That's why I'm so passionate about forgiveness, because I was learning about forgiveness with that clip as a metaphor. 
and it's powerful. So let's see if I can find the YouTube link for that. I'll put it in the comments if I have it. But if you can't just watch the movie yourself, the mission, I recommend it highly. Anyway, so um, links will be in the comments I mentioned, including forgive this worksheet if you want to get that, and also my self love practice and a couple other things. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, welcome to my daily Facebook Live. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. It's all it is every day, seven days a week. Sometimes the time moves. I might be moving it Saturday, I'm at a Memorial Saturday. We'll see if I do one then. But basically, it's a commitment I do to serve, to inspire, and to awaken. So hopefully it's given you some value. If you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below in the comments and I'll respond as well. Secondly, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I have a bunch of replays. This is number 966. There's 965 plus this one out there. Um, my business page on Facebook is Barry Selby, the author. You can please go ahead and like my page. There's a couple of hundred there that you can see. Facebook's not very good at keeping them more visible, but at least you've got the first 200 or so, or I should say the most recent 200 or so. If you want to watch all of my broadcasts, though, I recommend you go over to my YouTube channel because I'm backing them up there for safekeeping. So if you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can um, subscribe to my channel. That's right, subscribe. And there is a playlist called Messages for the Masculine where all of these broadcasts live, and you can find any one you want, search for keywords, play any one on the back, and get some value. Again, links will be in the comments. I invite you to check them out. They will change your life if you're willing to change your life. I'm here for you that way. And, uh, and again, I'll put the clip. If I can find the clip from the movie, I think it's on YouTube still. I'll put that in the link comment, in the comments as well. I thank you for watching. Please put yourself first. Love yourself. Forgive yourself. Be kind to yourself. And as I usually say in every broadcast, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.